The Islamic conquests completely changed the course of history. Beginning as a small principality centered around the city of Yatrip in the 620s, the Islamic state would expand rapidly in the following years. In less than a couple of decades, the successes of the Prophet Muhammad would come to rule over the largest empire the world had seen at that point. The religion of Islam would spread over a vast area, ancient massive empires would be toppled under the sword of the Caliphate, and a new era of history known as the Islamic Golden Age would begin. Those events fundamentally changed not only the faith of the region, but the one of the entire world as well. All of this can make us wonder, what if all this never happened? What if the religion of Islam founded by Muhammad remained just another insignificant offshoot of the major Abrahamic faiths? Just how different the world would be in such a timeline? Believe it or not, the Arab conquest could have been avoided quite easily had certain events involving the Sassanid and the Eastern Roman Empire taken a different course. Just before the rise of Islam, the Persians and Romans had undergone an extremely exhausting war with each other. During this conflict, the Roman Empire lost control over the vital provinces of Egypt and Syria for the first time since the crisis of the 3rd century. The Sassanids, while acquiring new provinces, had in the process of expanding, completely overstretched their armies and drained their resources. This war would last for over 25 years and only be ended thanks to a risky but successful offensive tactic employed by the Roman Emperor Heraclius. And so finally peace would be negotiated in the year 629. A peace that would cost the Persian Shah Khosru II his life, leading to a major succession crisis in the Sasanian capital of Ctesiphon. Rome had restored its lost provinces, however trouble was brewing to the south. The Arab tribes now unified under the religion of Islam sought to expand, and the two old rivals of Persia and Rome would fall easy prey to this new caliphate. With Persia being entirely subjugated and Rome losing nearly all its non-European provinces, so how could these seemingly inevitable conquests have been avoided? The best way to do that is to somehow remove the quarter of a century long Roman Persian war. To achieve that we will first have to go 50 years back in time, during the reign of the Roman Emperor Maurice. Maurice was a very capable ruler, he excelled in military skills and the management of the empire's foreign affairs. Under him, Rome would enjoy excellent relations with Persia since Maurice had helped Shah Khosru II overthrow an usurper. Grateful for the provided support, the Persian Shah would sign a peace treaty of so-called eternal peace with Rome. Thanks to these unusually friendly relations with Persia, Maurice was able to skillfully forge alliances with the Arab tribes all over Arabia. All this made these nomadic groups much more inclined to back up Rome instead of the Sassanids in case of a war. The deterrent Roman influence against Persia in Arabia and the excellent relations between the Emperor and the Persian Shah were all the needed preconditions for a long and stable peace. However, as we'll see later, this would not be the case. Maurice had spent the majority of his reign campaigning in the Balkans against the Slavs and the Avars. During this period, the Emperor had come to believe that the best time to attack those tribes was during winter. At the turn of the century, Maurice would begin a campaign north of the river Danube aimed at completely crippling the Avar Khaganate. In the year 602, the Emperor would order his armies to winter north of the Danube, a decision that would be met with severe dissatisfaction by the exhausted Roman men. And thus, a general by the name of Phocas would refuse to comply with this command and lead the Roman army back to Constantinople. In the meantime, influential enemies of Maurice would see an opportunity to get rid of him and proclaim Phocas as their emperor. And so Maurice and his family would be all executed and Phocas be proclaimed an emperor. Upon hearing about the death of his friend Maurice, the Persian Shah Khosru II realized that he now had the perfect pretext to start a war with Rome. And so the Sasanians invaded, sparking a war that would eventually lead to the demise of both Persia and Rome in the long run. The question remains, how might we prevent this war from happening? The answer is, we simply prevent Maurice from ordering his men to winter in enemy territory and remove some of his enacted policies which jeopardized his relationships with influential Roman figures. And so the peace with Persia lasts, Maurice continues his campaigns against the Slavs and the Avars, and eventually after years of expeditions, pacifies and permanently removes them as a major threat to Rome. The eastern provinces, the Roman clan state of the Ghazanids and the bigger number of pro-Roman tribes in Arabia disabled the Muslims from expanding beyond the Hejaz. And thus, Muhammad's state collapses following his death in the 630s. 
Islam becomes the Iman or Abrahamic sect and the Arab Peninsula remains a melting pot of Abrahamic, Zoroastrian and pagan beliefs. At that point Maurice would have probably been dead for about a decade given his age. He would have left the Roman Empire in the stable hands of his two sons, Theodosius III and Tiberius III. If sources are to be believed, Maurice had planned an east-west divide succession plan for his two eldest sons. He had already made steps in that direction in our timeline by creating the two semi-autonomous provinces or exarchates of Africa and Italy. And so upon the death of Maurice, the Western Roman Empire would be re-established under Tiberius III. The next centuries look promising for both Roman states. The Western Empire would struggle for some time against the Lombards, who had been experiencing a period of relative stability. However, likely over several centuries, the new Western Roman Empire would eventually reconquer the entirety of Italy and Hispania, with the Franks becoming their major contestors. The Eastern Roman Empire, on the other hand, will experience a period of prolonged peace, comparable to the one during Pax Romana, with occasional trouble arriving from the Persians and northern nomadic tribes such as the Bulgarians and Hungarians, and later the Cumans and Pechenics. After some centuries of division, the culturally and theologically distinct Western and Eastern Roman Empires would begin fighting among each other. That would also likely eventually lead to a Christian schism similar to the one we saw in our timeline. Now let's go back to the Middle East. Before the Arab conquests, Persia showed no signs that it was going to collapse anytime soon. In fact, the Sassanid Empire was experiencing something of a golden age during the reign of Khosrow I in the latter half of the 6th century. And the empire also seemed relatively stable decades later under the rule of Khosrow II. And so the Sassanid Empire thrives in this timeline, having to occasionally deal with Turkic tribes in Central Asia and the Khazars in the Caucasus. Persia would likely begin to increasingly rely on Arab mercenaries to protect its borders. And thus the Arabs would likely at some point begin to play an important role in the Persian military and politics. The dominant religion of Persia will still remain Zoroastrianism. Other popular cults like Manichaeism had already been on the decline in the region and the other popular cult of Mazdakism was severely suppressed by the Sasanian clergy and nobility as it aimed to redistribute wealth from the higher social strata to the peasants. The Arabs remained divided as without Islam there wouldn't be anything to unite them. The tribes of Arabia, despite speaking languages from the same Semitic branch, were still very culturally distinct from one another. Islam played a major role in homogenizing the Arab culture and without it becoming a major religion, Arabia remains home to numerous kingdoms, some of which would remain clients to the Persians, others to the Romans and third remaining independent. And so that summarizes the political situation in this timeline, massive changes would likely occur only with the rise of the Mongol Empire in the 13th century. Thanks to all who stayed till the end and special thanks to my patrons Troy Tempest and Mampir. That's all from me and I'll see you in the next one.